Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Tecton Zoo. And yes, we have a snow cannon. Today we're going to be building a beautiful habitat for the Japanese macaque in the new Tecton Mountain area. And I think this is one of my favorite builds for quite a while. Um, I hadn't really done that much planning, just a quick little sketch. But about halfway through building it, I thought I really, really like this. Um, it's definitely got the best roof I've ever made. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really hope you like it. Let's get into it. So the concept for this is to try and combine two different styles, the Tecton style that I always use in this suit, and then an aesthetic from an aviary in Geneva called the Bois de la Batie, um, which I used in the wetland zoo for the red crowned crane aviary. And I really, really liked that. I thought it looked really good. Um, it's such a beautiful aviary. I effectively just stole it wholesale. So I wanted to try and combine the two together. And I've got to say, uh, they go together pretty nicely when it's finished. Um, so I'm putting some mesh in here. We're going to be using white mesh all the way around. And then we're going to have a really beautiful custom roof with um, windows in it that's going to provide a lot of shade for the macaques and then also highlight certain areas for the guests depending on where the sun is at the time. Uh, the Japanese macaques live in the sort of slopes uh, of mountains over in Japan and it's pretty cold obviously being halfway up a mountain um, but it can get fairly warm in summer so I think they're going to be pretty happy in the British climate apart from at the very height of summer so it's important to have a lot of shade in the habitat so that they're, uh, they're happy temperature wise um, so the roof is going to provide that but I also want to use the roof like I say to highlight certain points of the build so we'll get on to that later what I'm doing at the moment is doing the shape so the big sort of squares of plastic that you see here they'll go they're just there to um, give me a grid to work with so everything's nice and smooth same as the leopards last week and these circular structures are going to be various different parts of the habitat so at the front we're going to have a couple of hot pools obviously for these guys as they uh, as they use them in the wild and then behind it we're going to have one for enrichment um, one for the forage feeder so the idea is they spend a lot of their time on one of these four different platforms depending on um, you know what they fancy doing at that point and that also keeps them towards the front of the habitat so that the guests get a better view so I want a nice circular um, shape at the front and then it's going to extend out to the back so it's um, sort of a curved rectangle kind of shape like that. Um, this is the first of the hot tubs so we'll sink that down and then each one of them is going to be higher than the last so you get a really pleasing effect when you stand at the front here and look at it um, and I'll extend these down into the ground so they are proper platforms. And later on we're going to have a lot of natural looking rock work um, to contrast with the very uh, sort of bright white man-made look of the structures themselves. We'll fill in the top of these two back ones so that we can put things on them and then we'll dig out the terrain here for some water. We want the water to be really shallow so that the macaques can uh, display the bathing behavior in it rather than you know sort of just swimming or anything like that. So we'll get that as shallow as we can um, in this pool and then the same in the next pool um, we'll use a bottom made out of plaster to bring the uh, the water level up. Obviously with Planet Zoo the water level sort of goes in meters so there's this level here and then if you wanted it any lower than this it'd be a meter lower and if you wanted it any higher it'd be a meter higher so um, can you use concrete to uh, put a bottom into the pool to get the depth exactly where I want it. And then we're just going to copy this circular shape around to get a really nice uh, sort of stepped look to it so the macaques can climb up to it. With this one, because it's higher, I'm going to need to use glass barriers to keep the water in. So we'll put glass barriers around and then raise the, um, the concrete platform or concrete circle rather to cover it up. So now I've got the water at the height I want. I can lower this glass 
Uh, it wouldn't let me lower all of it. There's one panel, which for some reason, <laughs> the game just wouldn't let me move uh, this one here. So um, I leave that one where it is. Um, because this is going to have rocks going from here all the way up to the next platform so I can easily hide this one panel of glass with uh, a rock and that's not a problem and then we'll put some of the um, sort of hot water tap enrichments in as well and then I'm going to use some of the new Siamang enrichments for them as well I want a big climbing area back here so as well as all the enrichment and hot tubs etc at the front we've got loads of climbing for them and I think uh, that the Japanese macaque is one of the animals they improved in the latest update because they've gone absolutely crazy for this climbing structure since I put them in there, which is brilliant, along with the, uh, the capuchins and the, the siamangs themselves. So yeah, this gets a lot of use and it's nice and high, so there's still a good view of it from the path at the front. And next up, we'll get the barriers in, all null barriers all the way around. Uh, no need for anything else because the mesh takes care of that. And while I'm doing that, I think I mentioned in the last episode that we are almost complete with Tecton Zoo. So I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the, uh, the final plans for the zoo. Um, so after this episode, there is just five episodes of Tecton Zoo left to create. Um, I mentioned that we were looking at adding the macaques and Pajalski's horse into the mountain area. But there are three other things that the zoo really needs. Firstly, a proper restaurant, because we don't have one. Secondly, a gift shop, because apart from the little sort of uh, just a memento, etc. pods that we have scattered about the place, we don't have a proper gift shop. And thirdly, we need another spawning pad. So at the front of the zoo, um, by the entrance, I've got two spawn pads because I deleted the original entrance way back when you could do that in franchise mode. Um, and I figured if I only put two of the spawn pads back, I'd have some extra cash, <laughs> which was useful. Um, but the problem is, and one of the, the sort of perennial problems with Planet Zoo is that the bigger your zoo gets, the less guests you get, sort of the further away from the entrance you get. And because I have the guests limited to three and a half thousand on this map to keep the frame rates up, there's just not a lot of guests back here. Once you get to sort of the primates area, and even worse, once you get through to here and South American Giants, there's hardly any guests. So what I want to do is put another spawn pad in. So I've been saving up. <laughs> uh, we're going to do that next week. And that is going to be hidden within the gift shop restaurant complex so that we get a more even distribution of guests throughout the zoo. And I think with some of the real big ticket animals that we've got up at this end of the zoo as well, like the gorillas and the chimps, etc., I think that's gonna help raise more money as well. Once we've done that, we've got one more animal to get into this mountain area, because uh, I found a little bit of extra space, which is great. And then we're gonna build the final habitat in the zoo. Um, I'm not gonna say what's gonna be in that, uh, but it's gonna be a pretty sizable habitat um, and that's going to be on the other side of the zoo from where we are here but just behind south american giants that will take us up to episode 49 and then obviously episode 50 the final episode will be the full zoo tour anyway let's get back to this build so i'm working on the snow cannon here which you saw in the intro I think this would be a cool idea. So it's based on one of the new enrichment items where kids can hit the button to hear a sound of a certain animal. Uh, I guess they're supposed to identify what animal it is. Uh, but when they get there, they play an animation of them hitting the button. So I thought we could cover it up um, and then build a snow cannon, which will fire snow out with the uh, special effects piece that does that. Uh, obviously it's not actually going to be tied in to the kids hitting the button unless you get the timing just right like I did in the intro um, but it's just another little interaction uh, I thought it was a cool idea we don't have anything like this in the zoo so I thought it'd be fun to do that so mainly made out of plaster the enrichment items some of the new um, air conditioning units the special effects piece and then later on we'll add some more decorations which you saw in the beginning and then like we did in the snow leopard habitat, we'll hide a cooler under the ground and paint some snow in. Um, when I'm finished with this habitat, the macaques, I think they're on like 98% happiness. They don't have enough snow, obviously for the game's standards, uh, but this little patch uh, combined with making sure everything else is as you know, close to what they need as possible, still leaves them pretty happy, uh, which means I'm pretty happy. So it's starting to come together on the inside now. So I'm gonna do a bit of work on the outside and cover up the edges of these paths using a lot of these rubble pieces in this area of the zoo. I just think it's fitting for a uh, mountain area. Uh, I've used them before in Land of the Reptiles, but 
they just really really fit so there's a lot of these going in and then I'm using the railings from the guest seating um, I've never actually used the guest seating for its intended purpose but I thought these railings were pretty cool I've not used them in the zoo before uh, they're recolorable and the metal so they go in nicely with the aesthetic and I just thought they would fit uh, well in here bit of a change from what I normally use to do those uh, and then we're going to move on to the roof which is uh, my favorite part so the way I'm going to do this is copy the four circles on the floor up into the ceiling so that the windows are in exactly the right place and then I'm going to copy the individual bricks that I've put into the roof pieces and copy these in exactly the right place one by one all the way along the roof this took a long time but uh, it's the only way I think uh, that you can get it to look like this um, so that when we finish the roof will be completely solid and then with these perfect circular windows in it um, it looks really good I'm so happy with it um, like I say it's one of my favorite builds for a while and it's all about the roof so yeah definitely worth the time taken to do this but each group of bricks is just individually copied um, all the way along and then stopping when it starts to sort of peek through the circle uh, when it's finished we have a lovely roof and then we just fill the circles in with glass for the windows and then finally a bit of plaster on the end to round it off and just get the roof um, absolutely perfect next up we'll put the supports in to uh, keep the roof up there these are again based on the um, Bois de la Batie in Geneva um, a really beautiful way to keep the concrete supported um, we just have these double um, columns which I think are designed to resemble trees sort of modernist uh, trees and they go all the way around um, and if they look a bit flimsy or like they're not strong enough uh, that's what it is in real life so uh, <laughs> I guess I guess they work then we're gonna do the rock work that I mentioned earlier so I want a uh, really natural looking rocks covering most of the ground at the front and then rising up to cover all of these um, circles as they go further back so we go from sort of flat rocks at the front gradually getting higher uh, until they meet this circle and then getting higher again until they meet the next circle and again just get that sort of mountainous kind of feel in here the final thing we're going to do is build a shelter so i want this to be really really simple so i'm going to build it on a grid but i also want it to line up exactly with the mesh at the back so i'm going to split it in half and build it on two grids and then join it back together so you end up with something that looks like a rectangle but actually isn't because each side isn't parallel with each other and that's just going to fit it perfectly into the uh, the back of the habitat here so we'll put a door over the keeper gate and then start moving the separate pieces into place um, just building it out of plaster and then i need to color it because it's going to be completely covered up with um, sort of fake rocks in a second put a concrete floor in again on uh, two grids and just rotated so that it fills the, um, the floor in and then we'll move on to using a mixture of the rocks and the faux rocks to cover it all up so that from the front of the habitat in fact from the angle that the guests stand at at the front you can't really see any of this building apart from the top of it so we don't need to go too crazy with the theming here and it's also going to function as extra climbing for the macaques so i'm putting the rocks in in such a way that they can climb this and then we'll put some of the faux rocks in as well to give it a bit more of an interesting texture if you're enjoying this don't forget to hit the like button and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button it really helps the channel out and that is the japanese macaques done thank you so much for watching as always guys and i'll see you again soon for the next episode of tacton z thanks for watching bye